Hey guys, Tech Made Easy, and thank you so much for clicking on our video today. Well, we've got Superman hanging out in the back there as we do the review on the Ace Volt Camp Power 2000. Now, this is a 2000 watt power station that can surge to 4000 watts. Now, it's got that lovely lithium iron phosphate battery that'll give you 3,500 cycles and then it goes to 80%. Now this can power and charge up to 16 devices, which is really cool. It supports up to 500 watts of solar. Look, we're going to unbox this. We're going to take a close look. We're going to go over specs. We're going to do testing. And then I'll share my likes and my dislikes with you guys. So why don't we go ahead and check this out. Hi, this is Al from Tech Made Easy with a really quick message. The video you're about to watch is sponsored. We received this product from the vendor. But keep in mind, we will be very honest with you as we review the product. That is very important to us. If you like our video, I sure hope you give us a thumbs up. I hope you share our video. And last, I really hope you subscribe and become a part of the family. Thank you. Let's go ahead and get this unboxed. And there you go. Let's go ahead and take a look at what you get. All right. So as you can see, you get this power station we're going to go over in this review. We get Anderson solar cables. So that's good. They give you the solar cables. And then we've got an AC cord, which means the power brick is installed. It, we don't have to worry about carrying a big power brick around. That's pretty cool. And then you do get a pretty decent sized manual here. So I'll look through that, but let's go ahead and move forward. Let's go over some basics now. So the model is the Camp Power 2000 and uh, MSRP on this is $18.99, but I've seen it on sale recently for $14.99. Now, it is only sold on the Ace Volt website right now, but uh, hopefully Amazon will pick this up down the road and other resellers as well. It is 2,000 watts, all right? A 4,000 watt surge, which is pretty impressive. And it's got a pure sine wave inverter, which is really nice. That's uh, really important to have. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. The battery capacity on this thing is 1997. Um, I don't know how many of you have been around since 1997. What a year in comparison. But weird capacity. But still, 1997. That's fine with me. Now, here's the thing. This is a lithium iron phosphate battery, which is now being called LFP. And the cycles on this thing is 3,500 cycles. And then after that, it goes to 80% capacity. So, this thing should last a very, very long time. Another thing that's nice, it takes about 500 watts of solar, which is good. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and take a close look at this. Let's go over some of the ports. Let's go ahead and start in the left-hand corner to take a close look at this. You've got your car charge port. It's a 12 volt, 10 amp. And it's really, I like that it's covered. And I like that it's not hard to come off, which is good. Um, you also get an XT60, which is rare, right? As an output, 12 volts, 10 amps, but nice to have an XT60. It's really uh, rare to find in a power station. You do get two DC5521 barrel plugs, a 12 volt, 3 amp. And then look at that. You get six USB ports on this thing, which is cool. Two, you know, standard, two quick charge. And the quick charge, I believe, is 18 watts. And check this out. You get two USB Type-C, and these are 100 watt. So I like that. You get flashlight on here, and uh, we'll try to do a demo of that later on. Of course, your power button, your screen, and uh, let's turn the uh, power station on. You got to hold the button, and then it turns on. And let me see if I can move some light we can get a better look. I mean, nice power, um, nice uh, screen. You know, not bad. You've got your input, your output wattage there. So we're going to use this. You've got a percentage here with the bar. 
and then uh, your charge or discharge time. So I like that. Let's look at the left side. And we've got an overload protection button there. We've got, this is where your input is, by the way. So your, your, your AC adapter is built in, which is cool. You don't have to carry a big brick around. And look at that. You've also got uh, the cable that they gave us. The Anderson cable is used for your solar charging. Again, 500 watts maximum on the solar charging. I like that it has a cover. If you go around this side, you've got just a little bit of information on here, you know, which is helpful. And uh, we go over to the right side, you've got your fans, your ventilation. We had on the other side also, you get your power button for your AC. And uh, let's just open this up. And we get six 2000 watt, you know, um, AC outlets, all right, three prong. So nice to have. I like that they're all three prong. So that gives you the flexibility. You do get some rubber on the bottom. If I could, this is about 48 pounds, guys. So <laughs> give me a minute. Let me turn this around. We'll take a look at the bottom. And uh, then we'll take a look at the top. So here's the bottom. You get these uh, rubber on all four corners. So that's nice. That's going to be helpful when putting it down on you know, maybe places that you don't want to get scratched. So I like that. Let me uh, put this down and then we'll take a look at the top. Here's a good look at the top, and then uh, I guess these come off so you can access the insides and do repairs. There's screws in here, but, you know, good room for your hands. I don't know if these are aluminum, but uh, they seem cold, you know, <laughs> so, yeah, but uh, they seem to do the job. you got some nice beefy handles to lift this thing up. Again, you know, 48, 49 pounds, definitely uh, not light, but, you know, LFP, right, lithium-ion phosphate batteries, so pretty cool. Let's go ahead and test the weight on this because it's it's pretty heavy, you know. Oh. We'll see what we get here. So, 47.14 pounds. All right. Again, if we switch, 766 ounces and 21.71 kilograms there. Very helpful. Not bad. All right. Guess what? It's time for... Know before you buy. And this is a segment that I've been putting in all of my power station videos moving forward. And it's really for folks that are new, right? Thinking about getting one of these, tempted to get one of these. And why do I put this in my videos? Look, I don't want you to buy one of these and it doesn't meet your needs. Okay, that's the goal. Hey, I had a friend that bought a small power station. It was a steal. They got it on sale. And, um, you know, it could power lights. It could power fans. But they couldn't believe that it couldn't power a coffee maker. And I'm like, did you know that, that if you're using like a Keurig, they use like a thousand watts. I've actually got a Keurig K-Supreme Plus Smart. Say that five times. And that thing uses 1,400 watts for a short period of time to make a cup of coffee. But if your power station doesn't have enough power, it won't work. So that's why we came up with no before you buy. So let's go on to slide number one. This is number one. What do you want to power? Take time and think about what you want to power why are you buying this? Why are you thinking about buying this? You know, is it for phones and, and laptops and drone batteries? Well, that's fine. You can get a lot of different power stations to do that job. You know, what if the power goes out? Is it for your refrigerator to keep your food cold? You know, now you need some power. Um, home internet? What about if you want to take this with you and power your power tools? TVs, phones, you know, things like that. So number one, know what you want to power. And number two, right? Check out number two. Let's bring that up. How much power do you need? Right? We don't really know. I didn't know a coffee maker would use 1,400 watts. A year ago, I learned that my dryer uses 5,500 watts. I was like, what? I've got to start hanging my clothes to dry. So, 
you know, once you know what devices, now it's a matter of, okay, how do I find out how many watts they use? And here's the other thing. If you're powering a refrigerator, you know, knowing the wattage is one thing, but what about when the compressor kicks on? That uses even more wattage. So we call that starting wattage or surge wattage, but a refrigerator is a little bit different. It's actually the compressor. So LED lights use 5, 10 watts. Laptops can use 75 to 150 watts, you know, in that range. TVs can vary. The newer TVs we get today, they're, they're definitely a lot more efficient. You know, 100, 200 watts. Refrigerators can vary. I mean, you, you've got if you got an old refrigerator, that thing can use like 500 watts when the compressor kicks on. And think about a CPAP. You know, your power goes out and, and you've got to have the CPAP running through the night. So can it run it by wattage, but also by battery capacity? That's a little bit different. We'll talk a little bit about that. But that's number two. Let's go ahead and move to number three. So number three is how long will you want to run these items? Again, it's always good to think about these things ahead of time, right? Let's say that your power goes out, you know, two times a year and it's for like a five, six hour period. Okay, then you need something that's going to at least run for those six hours or so, right? So now you know. Let's put it all together. So it's number one, what do you want to power? Number two, how much power do they require, those devices and appliances? And number three, you know, how long will you need to power them? If you can answer all three of those questions, you're going to be in better shape. And that's my goal. Now, I'm going to bring up something really helpful. All right. We're going to bring up a, a, an estimated runtime sheet. Let's bring this up for a minute so you could see it. So this is the estimated runtimes based off this specific power station we're talking about today. And it has a 1997 watt hour battery. Okay. Let's start off with the refrigerator. So that small refrigerator, I call a college refrigerator, 75 watts. There are around 75 watts, give or take. You could run that up to around 26 hours. Now, if you have a refrigerator that uses about 200 watts, you could run that for around nine and a half hours. If you want to run your home internet, your router and your modem, well, let's say they use 50 watts, you could run that for around 39 hours. If you have an average fan, the stand-up fans that use about 60 watts, you could run that for around 32 hours with this power station. LED lights, 10 watt, could run almost 200 hours. Now let's talk about CPAP and then we'll get into smartphones. So CPAP, 60 watt CPAP could run around 32 hours. And a 100-watt CPAP could run around 19.5 hours. Interesting. Now, let's talk about smartphones. So an iPhone 12, an iPhone 12 is about 25 watt hours. That could actually be charged around 79 times with this power station. The Samsung S21 is about 36 watt hours, that battery. You could charge that around 55 times. So I hope this was helpful, and let's continue with the review. All right, so here is one of the accessories I wanted to show you. It is an LED USB light, and uh, you just have to turn on the USB power and tap the corner to turn it on. Again, very flexible. You can, you can bend this any way you like. You can put it any way you want as well. And it comes in a two pack and it doesn't use, I mean, really, it probably uses like a, like a half a watt, not even. So a light like this could last a long time and it might be better for you than the light in the front. So I'll put some links in the description, but let me show you the next two accessories. So these next two accessories I like because, you know, some people like using USB type C. And some people like using USBs, right? So what if you want more USB type C's? Well, you can actually use this simple USB converter and it'll convert from USB type A to USB type C. Very simple, just put it in. And now you've got 
another USB Type-C. So pretty cool. Now, I also have, if you want more USB Type-A's, I've got another accessory. So this guy here, right? Plug it into USB Type-C and it gives you a USB Type-A. So again, plug it in and voila, that does the job. Now the last accessory I will show you and we'll move on is what if you don't use these barrel plugs, right? And you just want to convert them and use additional car chargers, right? So this is a pretty popular accessory. So you got one here already. You can convert these two to a car charging port. So I'll put that in the description as well. So I'm in a dark room and we're going to just test the light so you can see how it works. It has a, a light, an SOS, and a strobe. So let's go ahead and turn a light on. So that is the light. Okay, now let's do SOS. And then strobe. Off. Light. Not bad. You know, it's not obnoxious. I think it does a decent job considering. We're going to take a moment now and test the UPS functionality. Now, again, I'm not necessarily going to call this a UPS because some of these are not fast enough for computers and servers and other sensitive electronics. So just be careful. All right. What I'll do is I will find out from the manufacturer how fast in milliseconds and put it here. All right, no matter what I get, even if I don't get the information, I'll put it here. But right now, we've got the, the light here in the corner basically plugged into the side outlets. And as you can see, we're charging from AC. So it's powering the light. We are showing, obviously, AC. So this, this means it's actually being charged via AC. That little, you know, looks like a plug, right? So... Let's go ahead, and I got a switch here on the wall. As you can see, if you've seen my videos right there, there's the switch. When I hit that switch, it turns off the power from the wall. And our goal is to just kind of see how fast that light dims and the power switch is over. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in like this. And uh, by the count of three, my hand is on the switch. All right, and again, you're going to see that go away. All right, and it'll obviously stop charging. So one, two, three. That was pretty darn quick, I'll tell you. As you can see now, that little plug went away pretty quickly. If you saw it when I hit the switch, it's currently supplying about 15 watts to the LED lights. It says it'll run them for like 13 hours, 12, 11 hours, it's adjusting. All right, 11 hours. Again, let's do it again. I'm going to turn the switch back on. And it looks like it even switches pretty quickly, even when you turn it on. Again, we're going to do one, two, three. Well, guys, that's pretty quick. That's, that's one of the quicker ones I've seen in my videos. So I hope this test helped you out in some way. So one thing I recommend when you get a power station is to make sure it has a pure sine wave inverter. And what that's going to do is it's going to supply real clean power. If you ever plug a fan into a modified uh, inverter, you're going to actually hear a humming noise. You know, so if you're going to use a CPAP, if you're going to use a laser jet printer, an audio or vi visual device, um, and other devices they're going to work better with a pure sine wave inverter. And the Ace Vault actually does have a pure sine wave inverter. So that's really good news. All right, I hope that was helpful. So the question is, can this power station power our 55 inch TV, our home internet, router and modem, security cameras, smart home, and this fan what about a refrigerator also? Well, let's check that out and see if it can. All right, well, let's see how much power this setup uses. Um, I like the display, by the way, so far. I've, I've not used it enough, but I have to turn on the AC outlets on the side. So let me do that. 
And then some lights will start turning on and stuff. 17, 33, 44 watts. <coughs> Excuse me. 43. Now the TV and the fan aren't on yet. So uh, there we go. About 47 watts. And we're going to go ahead and turn the TV on. All right. So that should be coming on in a second. All right. And then we'll see, you know, again, that should be going up. Okay, and 147, 148, 149. Okay, now it's just adjusting, I guess. Okay, and the TV's normally 100 and something watts. I think it's about 120. So uh, it is turning on. I think it just takes a moment because the Roku has to turn on also. So that should make an adjustment in a second. Okay. And that Roku is taking a moment to turn on. So uh, let me give it a minute and come right back. Uh, okay, there it goes. It's, it's turning back on. All right, so the TV is back on. I don't know why it does that. We are at 153. I saw a second ago, 154. And then I'll start the fan up. So 150. Okay, let's turn the fan on. All right, the fan's on low. 194 a second ago. And then let's change the speed to high. All right, it's on high. We're hitting 200. All right, 197. Now we're going to go ahead and set up the refrigerator and plug that into this and see what that adds. So we'll be right back. But again, we've got our TV and all our devices turning on and our Internet. And we've got, obviously, our fan on as well. And so, uh, yeah, around 190-something. I just plugged in the refrigerator. Uh, it's not receiving power yet. I want you to see these, you know, just the startup. The refrigerator's off. But let's go ahead and connect that now. All right, we've settled to about 183 watts. I'm plugging in the refrigerator right now. We'll see what happens. All right, that's in, 183. 272, 294. So we went up as high as 294, you know, when the refrigerator has to, refrigerator has to, you know, start up. And then uh, it's going to go down to almost zero because, you know, the refrigerator has been on for a while. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'll put a little image on the right side of the screen so you can see some of the features of the refrigerator. It is a new model. It's a 2021 so it's really efficient and it hasn't been off for a while so it's pretty it's cold enough but as you can see here you know we're we're really using nothing at this point with the refrigerator connected but we did have that you know obviously that surge all right so as you can see this thing works now based off 33 percent it says it'll give us about two hours now keep in mind that will change because when the compressor kicks on on the refrigerator, this wattage could go up as high as, I would say, another 150 to 200 watts on top of this. You know, where the compressor, you know, the compressor kicks on on the refrigerator. But uh, yeah, I mean, and this is not even fully charged. So the Ace Vault is doing it with the fan, with the TV on, and what else can it do? All right, Brooklyn and I are in the kitchen, and we are doing our classic refrigerator test to see how long this power station can power this refrigerator. Now, it's got a pretty big battery, I'll be honest with you. And uh, we've got 100% charge. Now, we didn't plug this in yet. Okay, we're going to do that in a moment. Now, I will tell you the information on this refrigerator. I'll put something up in the right-hand corner. Just to give you some information, it is a newer refrigerator. It's a 2021 refrigerator. Well, you know, it's a full-size refrigerator. As you can see on that image there, the information. So, you know, it's not a really old refrigerator. So we should get some really good time out of this power station. So give me a minute. We'll go ahead and plug it in and start this party up. So the refrigerator is plugged in, but it's not turned on yet. Okay, as you can see. So we're going to hit this power switch on the side. The AC power switch is here. So we're going to hit that and watch the wattage. All right. 
60, 141, 145. Okay, that's probably as good as it's going to get. So now it is 6.45 p.m. on Saturday. How long will this refrigerator stay powered? Of course, it is now powered, as you can see. So 6.45 p.m. on Saturday. Let's keep track. A good morning. 49% left on the battery at 8.33 a.m. Not bad at all. All right, a little after 11, we have 39% battery life. It says eight, nine hours. Again, that's not gonna be accurate. We got 46 watts going out to the refrigerator right now. You know, so again, 11, 11, 39% with 46 watts. We'll keep checking this out. All right, we're about five minutes shy of 20 hours in. We've got 27% uh, battery left and currently using around one watt. All right, 27%, 20 hours in. Well, as Brooklyn drinks her water, we now are coming to about 24 hours. We started 6.45 on Saturday. It's now 6.40 on Sunday. We've got 13% left on the battery and 66 watts going out. Not bad, huh? 13% on the battery, 24 hours later. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, I've got some fresh bananas, but look at this. We are 26 hours in. And we have 5% left. 26 hours in. 5% left. Pretty good, huh? And I can't wait to have one of those bananas in the morning. 27 hours in. We're still powering this refrigerator. We've got 2% left. 27 hours in. Well, I came over and this thing is dead. 10.23 p.m. I will put the final time in the upper left-hand corner. I got to plug this back in now. But good test. Really good test. I'm impressed. Okay, so the question is, can this 2,000 watt power station that can also surge to 4,000 watts, can it power my microwave? Now, my microwave is rated at 1,100 watts, but I've seen it, I think, go up to like 1,300 at one point. So let's turn on the AC outlet on the side. Okay, the microwave is turned on. And let's go ahead and press the button and watch the wattage and see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and press number one. I don't like that sound, i got to tell you. 1,300 watts. Okay, I'm going to stop this because I don't like that sound. So I'm not impressed, guys. I've never had that. And I've tested this microwave with other power stations. I'm going to call that a fail. Now let me plug it into AC and let me actually show you. It's actually plugged into the wall now. And let me show you how this is supposed to sound. Ready? So you hear that? Doesn't sound nothing like how it sounded when it was plugged into this. Not happy there. So here's the next question. We saw what happened with the microwave, right? This is 1400 watts. I don't know if it can run it, but we'll find out. And I don't want to damage my appliances, I'll tell you. So let's turn on the AC outlet on the side here. Okay. And uh, Keurig is turning on. So I'm going to wait a second. And now I've got a used Keurig in there. I'm just going to open this up. I'm going to close it. And I'm going to wait for the uh, lights to flash, telling me it's ready to go. All right, it is ready to go. So we're going to watch this and listen as well. So watch the wattage and listen. Okay, we're going to hit 8. And now we're going to get ready to press the K button. And again, we're going to listen and watch the wattage. Ready? One, two, three. Sounds okay. 
500, 1100. A thousand eighty four coffee's coming out. Wattage eleven nineteen. So it looks like it could make a cup of coffee, but for some reason, a microwave really does something special. I mean, even if the surge was two thousand watts. It should have worked on the microwave. Okay. Well, this will drop down in a moment after it's made the cup of coffee. All right. Here it goes. So once it's finished pretty much making the cup of coffee, the wattage drops down drastically. So the coffee maker worked. All right, we're in the kitchen studio and we're gonna test the 2000 watts coming from this, okay? And uh, we're gonna start off with uh, about a 700 watt charger. This is an Ego 700 watt charger. So let's just plug this in. Actually, it's already plugged in. So let's turn on the AC outlet and watch it creep up. Power. Okay, 100. 200. 300. 400. I don't know why it's reading 470. This definitely should read higher. Higher. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and plug in. We've got a dual charger over here. So we're going to go. This is about two, uh, 240, 280 on each side. All right, so we are still at 471. So I'm going to plug in this guy here. Sorry about the side camera. All right, plugged in. Turning on. And uh, let's see, I don't know, we should be 800 or something like that. So 550, 600, 650, interesting. Coming up to uh, 700. Oh, should be over it. Interesting. Okay, so that's supposed to be 700, and that's supposed to be 280, which is almost a thousand. So that's weird. All right, let's put another battery on. That should be another like 280. All right, so we're at 690. Let's see what that does. All right, over 800 now. Okay. 900. 900. Okay. We're hanging around 920 now. That's weird, I'll tell you. I don't know if it's doing some trickery. In the background, I'm not sure, 920. Wow. All right, let's plug in a 200, a 320-watt Ego charger. That little guy there is 320 watts. It's one of the newer ones. So bear with me on just plugging things in. Okay. It's just hard with the outlet on the side. I just don't, I'm not a big fan of the design and then the panel. All right, that's plugged in now. That's turning on. 
So let's see. We're over a thousand. I mean, this thing should have been way higher. Now, I'll tell you, I've got an 1100 watt heating gun on high. And I'm going to throw that on. Okay, but let's set this settle a little bit. I'll start off with low on the heating gun. So we are at 1170. I'll tell you, right? I mean, really? We've got good power being pulled. I don't know what's going on here. All right, so we're at 1170. It's time for the heating gun. I think it's around 500 on low and about 1100 on high. I'm pretty sure of that. So let me plug this in. And again, guys, very difficult, but I'm going to make it happen just for you. Okay, it is plugged in. Got to be careful with the heat. It's not turned on yet, but when I hit the switch, I'm going to put it on low. I got 1170, 1170, and here we go on low. 13, 14, all right, 14, 50. And this is low. We have 14 something, and we are on low right now. You can't see it, but it's on low. 14, 50. All right, I'm going to hit this on high, and I'll tell you something. This thing should trip. Um, so let's go to high. All right. And let me hit the screen button so you can see. I am on high now. And I don't know. This, this heating gun doesn't even feel like it's on high as far as uh, the blower on, it, on itself. So this is weird. This thing is on high, and that's hardly budging. There's some trickery going on. You know what? I'm going to plug the heating gun into a meter so you can actually see the wattage. All right. Let me just uh, turn this off. One, two. And it'll drop down to 1,000 watts. Interesting. I'll be right back. All right. I'm here in the corner not turned on yet okay we are plugged into the wall i'm going to turn this on low which is switch one so that's low 581 watts or 570 something as it adjusts okay now i want you to hear it also i'm going to switch it to high ready 1100 and change and you heard that right you heard how high it got let me go to low and go back to high so there's some trickery going on with that power station i mean it didn't trip but it's not running at full capacity especially with devices like this all right, here's how we can check trickery. Now, I only have 6% left on the battery. First, we're going to have wattage, and then I'm going to switch over and actually show you voltage just to see what the story is here. All right, I'm going to take the heating gun, and I'm going to put it on high. That's the best way to go about it. All right, so low. I'm showing 400 and change. All right. Let's uh, now let's go to high, and you see I'm seeing a thousand here now, and I guess because the other load wasn't on, it's not really the 1100 like before, and then if we hit voltage, it's 109 volts. So this thing is doing something when it's got a big load on it. It's doing something, you know, and I just can't explain what. But I'm going to try one more thing. All right, I'm putting a load on here. So this should be like minimum 500 watts, right? And that's supposed to be 700 watts. So right now I'm showing 700 and, all right, 800. So let me let that settle. I'm at the end of the battery, so I have to be careful. But we're going to now try the heating gun. 
and we're going to watch and see what it actually provides the heating gun. Okay, so now that we're at 900 and change, I'm going to turn on the heating gun and uh, let me switch this all the way back to normal wattage. All right, ready? We're going to try the low. All right, and we're at 400 and change. It should be 500 and change. And the power station's reading 13 and change there. And we're going to try high now. And it says 700 on the meter. So it's doing something here. Right? 1500 on the power station. 700 here. This should be 1100. And we're going to switch this to voltage now and see if it's messing with the voltage. I'm going to give it a moment to settle. But it's doing something. Now, okay, it's settling at 700 volts look at the volts 96 volts so it's lowered the volts 95 volts that's what it's doing all right guys so we've confirmed trickery on this video okay 5 48 p.m let's plug this in we want to see how long it'll take to charge from zero percent well, let's get this to kick on it's supposed to push in about a thousand watts i believe We've got that supercharge. Supercharge light is on. Uh oh. Look at that. We're already almost 500 watts. Okay. Seven, eight hundred. Nine hundred. A thousand. Eleven hundred watts. Okay. So it says it'll take about two hours. I guess we'll find out. It is officially 5 49 p.m. Let's see. We'll check back in a little while. Uh, probably about 45 minutes in, and uh, yeah, we're 42% charged. Still pumping uh, 1,100 watts practically. So 45 minutes in, 43% charged. Not bad. And the fan kicks on to keep it cool as well. Let's see if it slow charges towards the end. All right, 11 minutes after 7, we are 76%. And still 1100 watts going in. So we'll see if it starts slow charging at some point, but I'm not sure. I, I do like that at the end that it slow charges just to kind of cool things down, but we'll find out. The fans are definitely on. 733, we're almost 100%. I don't know why that says 100%. Two minutes left, we got to fill that bar, and look, it's slow charging 660 watts. That's good news. Well, should be done in a few minutes. I mean, two minutes is what it should be done. We'll be right back. 735, we are now 100%. There you go. Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, so I've got Brooklyn here. And uh, we are about to do a solar test on this here. And we're going to be using a 400 watt solar panel that is 48 volt. So this is a max 50 volt. We'll talk about solar specs after this because I think that's important if you're new and you want to have a little understanding. Um, this does come with an Anderson to solar cable. And uh, we've got some longer cables because we like to keep the power station in the shade and Obviously, the solar panel in the sun, while Brooklyn eats the junk in the yard. We also have a solar disconnector. So this actually disconnects these cables when you're done. And then we've got this solar angle guide. All right, I'm going to show you this real quick, and then we'll do our solar test. So this actually helps you make sure that you've got the best angle. So if you see that little dot in the middle, and I'm just trying to make sure I'm focusing correctly, let me get out of here. All right, so this dot in the middle, all right, basically is a shadow that it gets, it creates. And what happens is you want, you, what you do is you take this and you put it on the panel and you really just want to make sure that the shadow is in the center as much as possible. Now, as you can see, in this case, it, it's a little higher, but it's almost perfect, right? So what that tells me is I'd probably have to take the panel and angle it 
a little more down and then you'll see it's actually centered. Again, if it was all the way the wrong way, you see how the shadow goes up? So this really helps, it's like 20 bucks. I'll put the link in the description, I love this little thing. But let's check this test out. All right, so we're gonna just take the cable they gave us, right? We're gonna connect it to our longer solar cables, okay? So it's gonna connect this and then, you know. And then like I said, later on, we'll show you how to use the disconnector tool. It's very helpful, it's inexpensive, it's nice to have. Um, and then you just take this guy and you're gonna basically put it right here, all right? Push it right in, and now it's all the way in, okay? Now the power station is off, but once it senses power, it'll turn on. Let me go ahead and connect these other cables, and uh, then we'll check the power station and see what we're getting. And by the way, this is a 400 watt, like I said. It's a foldable panel, uh, portable. This is not light, okay? Um, and it is awkward because it's huge. It doesn't look huge, but it's huge. We put a piece of wood on the bottom to actually make the panel straight. This actually comes with a case that acts like a kickstand, but with a panel this big, it just, it works, but it doesn't work great. So we just took a piece of wood. As you can see, it goes along the bottom. We use it as kind of a kickstand so that the panel itself is not really touching the ground too much. You know, in the summer, this panel will burn up your grass if you just leave it, you know, without that piece of wood. Um, it will, it will, because it generates power, right? So let's just connect this real quick. And let's go ahead and go to the power station and check what's generating. All right, let me see if I can get a good angle here. It looks like I'm getting about 200 watts right now, actually, which isn't bad. It's, uh... Honestly, about 29 degrees, all right, Fahrenheit here in New Jersey. And we are getting 220, oh, 230 watts out of that panel right now. That's not bad. That's not bad. We usually do a little better. But as you can see, when you get a 400 watt panel, you're never going to really get 400 watts out of it. So keep it in mind. There's always an efficiency rating, they call it. But I would call, it says here 93 minutes to charge from 82% to 100. So that is a success. And that's just a simple, you know, example on how you, uh, you know, do a solar test. Now, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect these, but I want to show you how it works. So you see, there's little pins in here that have to be pushed in in order for this piece to disconnect from this piece. And you can use your fingers, sometimes it works, but sometimes it's difficult. Having this like $6 accessory, what you do is these two things will go here against the pins. You see that? And now with these, it disconnects. And uh, Brooklyn, there goes my girl, she's a troublemaker. All right, our solar test is done. All right, let's take a little time and go over understanding solar, if you're new especially. So, first of all, we're going to talk about the solar panel. So, when you're going to buy a solar panel, you need to make sure that it meets the specs of your power station. So, the red arrow points out open circuit voltage. As you can see, it says 23.7 volts. All right, so just remember that. Now, right below that, you've got a green arrow pointing to the short circuit current, 6.66 amps. All right, so I know this is difficult to understand, but bear with me. So that's your solar panel, right? So you've got to know at least those two numbers. Now, let's go to the next screen and look at the power station now, just as an example. So here is number two, the power station, all right? So all power stations have a limit for solar. And so you can't just buy any panel and connect any panel to any power station because you could damage the equipment. So number one, you want to know what the max wattage is on the power station you're thinking about buying. All right, example, 100 watts, 200 watts. 
you know, some can handle as much as 1600 watts, believe it or not. Uh, but again, you need to know that. Number two, what's the max voltage? Which, if you remember the solar panel, that was the open circuit voltage, also known as VOC. Number three, what's the amperage, right? What's the limit? So what's the short circuit current? All right, you need to know that. And uh, let's take a look at an example and put it all together. So let's use this example here, right? This generic power station to the left. So let's say if you look at the specs and it says 300 watts max solar, 11 to 75 volts, 10 amp max, right? All right, so that's the specs for the solar for that power station. So on the right, the example I would use is you could buy a 300 watt panel. And what's nice about that is the panel will usually never give you 300 watts, just so you'll know. So you don't have to worry about that. So you could buy one 300 watt panel or you could buy three 100 watt panels and you can connect those in series. And I'm only going to give you that example for now. You just need to make sure that when you connect these in series that you stay under 75 volts. That's going to be very important because if you go over in voltage, you can actually damage the equipment. So let's take a look at an image of what series looks like. All right, here's a visual aid. So first of all, this is that power station. And here are the solar panels. And here's how you would connect them in series. But keep in mind, as you can see, each of them have 21.6 volts totaling 64.8 volts. And as you can see on the bottom, the max voltage on the power station is 75 volts. So we stayed within the 75 volts. I hope this information was helpful. All right, it's time for likes and dislikes. And I'm going to start off with my dislikes so I can end on a positive note. So first, I would say the first dislike is this thing is heavy. Now, it's a reality but it is still a dislike. It is 48.5 pounds or 21.99 kilogram. Now, it's, you know, certain people are going to have difficulty lifting this, right? Because it's heavy. It's, it's all, the weight is central and focused. It's got that lithium iron phosphate battery. Now, my second dislike was, if you saw in the power test in the video, um, there was some trickery going on where the voltage was lowered in order to handle you know, devices basically with higher wattage. Now, you know, the bad news there is you can't turn that off. And other brands have that kind of feature that you can turn off. And there are certain types of electronics that really will, you know, you could probably damage if you're lowering the voltage. So when you, you know, if you check out our video, you'll see that we were plugging in like all these different batteries and chargers. And then we were plugging in a heating gun and... It, it should have been way over 2,000 watts, and it wasn't. And I even used a meter to show you actual voltage and actual wattage. So check that out. That was pretty interesting. Now, one of the tests I did was with the microwave. And, you know, the coffee maker worked fine. But the microwave, when I plugged it into here, and it uses, it's supposed to be 1,100 watts, but I know it uses a little more than that. The sound the microwave was making, I was nervous, so I unplugged, I, I turned that off. But I did plug it back into the wall so you could hear the normal sound of the microwave. So I wasn't comfortable using this with my microwave. It was just a weird sound. I didn't like it, so that's it. Last dislike is there's no app, so you can't do firmware updates. You know, you can't control when the screen turns on or off or if it stays on permanently. And you can't do any remote management. But let's go ahead and talk about likes because I do have a few of them. All right, so my likes. Well, this has got some good power. I mean, it's a 2,000 watt uh, power station, right? Surges to 4,000 watts. It's got a nice size battery, right? I mean, the other thing I liked was the UPS on this thing was really quick. You know, I don't know if you saw the test. If you didn't, check that out. But you know, and I don't even know if I should be calling it a UPS, to be honest with you. But 
it was pretty darn quick. Is it quick enough for a computer to be connected to it? I'm not sure, so be careful with that. You know, if you're doing work on a computer, I just don't know, and I'm not going to take the chance on testing my computers with this. But I wanted to show you that. I was impressed on how quick it switched over. Now, this thing also charges pretty quick. I mean, considering um, it took less than two hours, uh, charging mostly at around 1,100 watts. So that is definitely another like. The display on this thing is pretty clear. I don't know. Let me see if I could turn this thing on. But uh, the display on this thing, and, and uh, I guess because of the lighting I'm using, but the display on this thing is, is really clear and easy to see. It does dim from time to time, um, which is fine. That's probably good for the display. I like that you have your input wattage, your output wattage. You know, you've got the percentage in the middle, uh, time remaining. I, I do like the display. It's a nice size display. Last but not least... I love that this thing is lithium iron phosphate, right? LFP. It's got 3,500 cycles, and then it goes to 80% plus. And if you maintain this well, then this thing will last years and years. And so that is my likes and dislikes. So let me bring up my new 10 scale rating system. Now, as you can see, 1 to 6, 7 to 8, 9, and 10. Now, you can hit pause if you'd like to review this. I really just thought it would be best to come up with a rating system that could help you. But why don't we move forward and actually see what rating this power station got. And I gave it an 8. You know, some concerns, but the product performed well, you know. So, again, go back to my likes and my dislikes if you want to know more. But this system got an 8. Not bad at all. All right. Well, I hope you found this review helpful in some way. And if you did, guys, take a moment. Give us a thumbs up. It would really help the channel, okay? If you're new to the channel, take a moment and subscribe. We would love to have you as a member of the family. Share our video with your friends, your family, or in any chat rooms that you might be in. And if you want to follow us on social media, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Guys, thanks so, so much. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Hey guys, take a moment and give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate it. As you can see, Brooklyn, she's waving her tail for you. Take a moment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell and you'll get notified of new videos we come out with. Also, follow us and contact us on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. We'd love to have you. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.